talk about what got us started running trumpets to start with. Yeah, that sounds like it. I'm just going to say, you know, hey, Kerry tried to get me to run trumpets for years and never would. And then we ended up champion champions. We had to. And Actually, I think I was the, in the champion of champions, everybody did the same thing on every call, remember, for years. Yeah. Everybody did the same thing on every call. Everybody, I think, yelped or either cut on a trumpet. That's a fact. And that one year, I said, you know what? Nobody kikis. Nobody kikis on a trumpet. Yeah. So in 2008, he I kikied on a trumpet. Everybody, because he just. Yeah. And, and then, of course, Mr. Practice here, <laughs> the next year, whooped up on me for the next five years. I was second place the next five years because he learned, and that was just learning to do a trumpet to run a trumpet for the competition mm -hmm. and then you started hunting with it so i kind of got into trumpets and I, and i i couldn't find one that suited me so i started making trumpets and that's kind of how that came about mm -hmm. making one to, to do what i wanted it to do and that was the mostly for yelping at that point because after you know we quit with the champion of champions mm -hmm. i was like well I'm, I'm gonna keep hunting with it but you were absolutely right. Um, since I started hunting with a trumpet, it's been unbelievable what how the turkeys react to it, which is the same thing you told me for 10 years and I wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> it's hard to get us mouth yelpers. Us, us guys like him diaphragm calls. He, he I'm, calm I'm like living die. If I can't kill it with this, and I ain't going to kill it. That's you know, how that I kind was. of mentality. Yeah. <laughs> so that I, my opener was when you was, when we was on the KT team hunt, was it three years ago now? And we was over at John, Mr. John's property, yep, yep. and we went around. That turkey was obviously had hens or something. He just wasn't gobbling a lot, much at all. And uh, we went up through there, and uh, I climbed up on that stump or whatever. You know, it's flat stuff down here. I got any elevation I could yeah. just to make myself feel at home. And I got up there and yelped and cut and didn't hear nothing. Then I really hammered down on him with cutting and nothing. Ah, oh, he ain't there. KT picked up that trumpet with that trumpet, and the gobbler didn't gobble. We don't know where he went, but there was two hens that were literally within a hundred yards that had not said a word to me when I cut at them and yelped at them and whatever, they came unglued and marched straight to us. And if mm -hmm. I'd have been sitting there with that mouth yelper, we'd have just walked right through them. Yeah. Could have very well had a gobbler with them. You know, maybe he would have gobbled at me cutting if he would have been with them. But I can tell you one thing, that day I left there, I said, hey, something to that sound that gets in the ear of a turkey that yep. the mouth yelpers ain't getting into. Yeah. This so. is kind of what I, learned over the years I think what a trumpet does is mouth calls I feel like you have to learn to run them to put feeling in it mm -hmm. friction calls box pot whatever you have to learn how to run it I think naturally if you get a sound out of this and start getting your rhythm it's got a pleading sound mm -hmm. I've noticed that out of and I think that's what gets the hens that's what I've noticed firing a hen up yeah it is unbelievable. It's, it is it amazing how hens. hens respond to it, and and I've always said if you if you're talking to hens and they're talking back, you you hitting on exactly oh, what you yeah. need. You win in the game exactly. without even knowing it. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, yeah. fellas, we're here in the KT team new shop. That's pretty slick, man. You've yeah. been working here. Yep. Yeah. Well, this this is Miss Angie's shop. Miss Angie, Miss Angie shop. and Jason. <laughs> yeah, they They've do, they work, do out here, work out here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we're out here because uh, these first couple hunts that I've shared, you know, uh, some of the stuff from 2020 that's just now hit. We've, I've been using a trumpet a bit. It's one of this, one of these gentlemen's over here in the corner. It's uh, one of his trumpets that everybody's been asking about. It's kind of uh, created quite a few questions, questions that I was not, do not feel qualified to answer. So I figured, you know, I need to get somebody in here who knows their way around the trumpet that can answer some of these questions um, because, uh, you know, Blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then is the way I felt when I started calling in turkeys with a trumpet. So um, that's what we're here doing. We're going to try to field some questions that I keep getting. And I think Mark's been kind of peppered with these questions since I've kind of told everybody, like, that's the trumpet that I'm using in that video. Um, I listened back to it, and I don't know why anybody would want it with me running it. But if you once you listen to Mark run it a time or two, you're going to figure out that the capabilities of that trumpet are far beyond what, what you've seen from me or heard from me. But... Um, Anyways, for the people that don't know, this over here in the bottom land camouflage, very nice color. He's uh, it's Mark Prudhomme, and this is the namesake of the KT team. This is Kerry Terrell. Everybody calls him KT. KT. And these are some uh, Grand National winning fools, but more 
importantly to me than that they're, they're turkey hunting fools so um that's what we're here to talk about is uh this trumpet deal um and yeah i guess we can start from the top we've already kind of gotten into a little discussion so we've already heard about what kind of got what got you into trumpets because well, we just heard what got mark into trumpets and we all know what got me into trumpets you know i started hunting turkeys and when georgia got a season in 1985 and of course i was trying to learn everything i could learn and I've always been one. A lot of people, they hear him, but they don't hear him. Well, I yeah. heard trying to figure out what they was doing to, you know, to be realistic, I guess. And any turkey call that come out, I was going to try it out. Well, this little store up in Statesboro had, I don't remember the name brand, it was a little trumpet, wood and a plastic mouthpiece. Well, of course, I had to have one. I grabbed one, and on the way home that same afternoon, it was a month before turkey season. And I pull in a field, checking one of my fields where there's two longbeards out there. And they see me driving the field. And they don't run, but they start trotting out the field. And I'm the whole way home, I'm playing with that trumpet. Well, I just happened to stick it out the window and cut on it two or three times. And I watched both. I couldn't hear them, but I watched them both go, ow. And I went, wait a minute. <laughs> they know where that's coming from. Yeah. And they saw my truck, but they had to go. Had to go I might be onto something here for a wild turkey to do that. So from then on, I started. I started in that that year. I saw that year what it would do to a hen. Mm. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm onto something here." And I kind of kept it a secret for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from then on, I got the. Of course, when I would get my hands on a trumpet, I tried different trumpets, different trumpets, and that's what kind of. But it was always in my bag. From that was probably in the early nineties. Yeah. When I and I think everybody can like, keeping it a secret and. Turkey hunting in, this, in itself is a cult. I mean, there's oh, people, yeah. we, we, we're different than, I'll agree that I, I can watch it as much as you try to deny it. Turkey hunters just march to a beat of a different drum. And then inside that little cult, you have different little little circles. And the, the trumpet circle is definitely a, it's a very pure, I mean, the folks that use trumpets seem to be pretty doggone passionate about it. Yeah. And uh, the folks that make trumpets are, doggone proud of their craft and um for good reason you know for dang good reason so i think that's really cool i think it, one thing that we're going to try to hopefully help with here is because trumpets aren't something that you typically just pick up and master it ain't something that you're going to pick up i mean it ain't like picking up a box call it ain't like picking up a pot call or a slate call and i mean even a mouth yelper it's not it's a lot more difficult because it's so much it's a suction type call so it's so much more different to operate than everything else so um, I think maybe that's what keeps the circle a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller when it comes to trumpets, because maybe some folks that do grab them, just like, man, what is this, you know? Um, so hopefully, after this video, we can um, shed some light on that, make it a little bit easier. Well, you know, another thing, too, it, it's just like anything else. The more time you spend with it, the better you're going to get. But you have to, a lot of people get frustrated with it. And you have to put the time in. You know, it's just like playing a musical instrument. If you pick it up every day and you're passionate about it and you want to do it, you'll end up doing it. it you, you don't have to be expert with a trumpet for turkeys to respond to it. For some reason, you know, they they just they respond to it. And, I mean, of course, you know, having your rhythm and everything and being the best you can be, running it helps. But... Also, I mean, I've seen people just pick one up and and they they still gobble at it and still respond a lot of times. And right. it's just another it's just another tool and one that's yeah. proven to be effective. We're not yeah. saying you grab a trumpet, you go to the woods, you're gonna kill every turkey out there. No, because they're gonna they're gonna make a fool out of you with a trumpet, like just like you holding oh, anything yeah. else. But yeah. it's just another tool. It's a different sound. I mean, the history behind trumpets also makes them pretty cool. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. new. Yeah. <clears throat> it you know, <laughs> trumpets have been around forever um in one way or another i mean um the american indians use wing bones from turkeys to to call up turkeys and you know i i don't i'm not as big on i don't know everything about the beginning but i know charles jordan way back maybe late 1800s early 1900s was was making um out of a, a wing bone mouthpiece with cane and um that's kind of where it all started evolving. People started using different materials, mm. and then they were changing the size and of the middle piece and the and the other piece. And then finally, I think maybe maybe the turpins started um, um, 
changing the mouthpiece, going with something different on the mouthpiece instead of a wing bone. And then that, that opened up the, the, the difference in the diameters all the way through. So you could actually make it the way you want, make it sound the way you want it by changing the diameters. So it's just kind of evolved over the years, but certainly nothing new. I know people have been using wing bones and trumpets forever. There's a lot of good trumpet builders out there. Oh sure. yeah, you know there's some there's some fantastic trumpets out there, and y'all don't think Mark's sitting here because Mark and I are friends. We've met through calling and through the KT team, and he just happened to be the trumpet that I was using that you guys have asked questions about. I contacted Mark, says, "Hey man, people are asking about your trumpets, but they're asking me a lot of questions. I don't like to answer because I really don't know what I'm doing here." So he agreed to kind of jump on this thing. So it's not like a, this isn't a sell pitch to to go buy one of Mark's trumpets, even though he makes a fine trumpet. His trumpets as a whole is what we're talking about here, and uh, their history is rich, and their following is, is tight-knit and, and pretty, um, uh, like I said, it's a, it's, a pure, it's a pure following. I mean, the f folks that do it are really passionate about it. Well, what y'all are probably here for is to get, uh, to figure out how to run one of these things, and I'm, I'm completely turning that over to these two guys because my experience level is, is, a, is a mole heel, heel compared to what these guys have with these trumpets. So, um, I guess you mentioned something about folks having to pull on that trumpet hard, mm -hmm. and I did want to note, in my limited experience, there are some trumpets that, that you have to pull a little harder than others. That is one of these things that a lot of the sounds you're getting out of the trumpet is from here. Mm -hmm. It has got to do with the actual method that you're using to make the sounds. It's not the instrument itself, mm -hmm. but there is some legitimacy to that instrument being designed for whatever sound that you're looking for. Because I know that I've got a couple of them that I, if I try to do soft, soft talk, right. it it's not mm -hmm. built for that. Mm -hmm. It's built mm -hmm. for that kissing type method, that louder, that... that mm -hmm. Well, the, the hardest thing to do with any kind of call, but especially a trumpet, is to design it so that you can soft call with it, you can get clear, you can get raspy, or you can get loud. And that, that's the challenge in, in building a trumpet is trying to make sure you can hit all those. And it may not hit everything perfect, but you're somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge of it. I, I just try to, to start as soft as I can, and you can always get louder, but mm -hmm. you can't start loud and then go softer sometimes. Yeah, it's hard. To, that's one of the things you can't back up from. You yeah. can always build that volume. Especially basis. on the roost. Mm -hmm. And... And a lot of people don't call the birds on the roost. Um, I do. I, I do. <laughs> I call the birds on the roost. I want now, to take that picture in his mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. and especially if he's got hens, mm -hmm. because they're calling. You're hearing hens tree up and around him, and I want to throw my hat in the ring. I want him to say, "Hey, there's another one right there." What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw. I'm going. Everybody has different ways about doing things, and I don't know if y'all's methods are identical or not. But I figured the way you hold the trumpet, we can compare the way each one of you guys hold the trumpet, and you may shift it for different calls. Different, but I was wanting to kind of get into the mechanics as well because I feel like a lot of these folks are like, "Let me get a trumpet," but I want to figure out how to run this bad boy. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's start trying to cover some of that type stuff as far as actually when you grab a trumpet, are you holding it between your second and third finger, your thumb and your first finger? Well, how how is it that you guys are grabbing hold of these things? Well. Everybody that builds a trumpet probably holds a trumpet different. You know, there was the the Turpin style of holding a trumpet, and um, you know they they had a certain way. Some people build their call to put a finger on the inside of it. Um, you know, mine, I I just hold it like that, and then I cover the whole halfway with the side of my middle finger. That's kind of how I do it, and then. What I do from there depends on the sound I want. If I want to make it a little bit softer or deeper, I'll close my hand. And I try to, I try to make it where I can run it with one hand. Mm -hmm. um, some trumpets, you might need a little more hand manipulation than others. But um, you, you can add this hand to, to change your sound. But you got to start kind of, you know, you got to keep that pretty close to that. That's and, pretty much how I yeah, yeah. have covered up halfway. Let me, um, before we get the cart before the horse here, I figured out we might be doing that. Let's talk about the parts of the trumpet. Because when you say I'm holding the end of it, it may be the bell of it, it may be the 
whole of it and maybe the mouthpiece and if for somebody that's just buying one they may not know exactly what we're talking about here so i guess let's let's hit that real quick and then let's jump right back to, yeah. to the grip and everything so well you know trumpet um you know there's different trumpets some some trumpets actually have a a wing bone mouthpiece some have um you know all different materials um but this would be the mouthpiece and then this is the body of the trumpet and this is the lip stop so um, the, the lip stop just kind of helps you go to the same place every time. Consistency. Consistency. And you get it where you want it and you, you kind of leave it there. Um, the opening in the, in the uh, mouthpiece is a, is a big deal. It's each call oh, yeah. makers, that's yeah, kind of their... And, and every hole is relevant to the other. If you, know, if you have a, you know, if I change this hole, I may have to change this, the diameter of this. Because the... There's that's just not a an open tube there. The body of that trumpet. There's internals inside everybody's trumpets. That's their own personal preference. Like that's that's what makes them different. Is is a lot of times they can be shaped a little bit different. But the the top secret stuff happens inside that barrel there. That's where the internals are. That's where everybody mm -hmm. gets their call to sound a little bit different or play how they like it. So yeah. Um. So we got the mouthpiece and the opening in the mouthpiece. Got the lip stop. You got the what do you call it? The, is that just the barrel of the trumpet, I guess? Just the body of the trumpet? Yeah, this would be the bell end. And the bell end where the, where the opening is. So. Right. All right, so now that we kind of know what we're dealing with here, we've already talked about how we're holding that thing. Um, what about the... There's a different sound, like the, the sound that you guys introduced me to that I had never heard come from a suction-type call, suction call like a trumpet, and that's that hoarse, that, that raspy sound that I had never heard with a, that type of call. Mm -hmm. The majority of folks hear a trumpet, or in the past have heard a trumpet, and they hear, I guess that's the kissing method, is it? I have a lot of questions. You'll hear a lot of my questions come across, or my statements come across with question marks on the end, because I'm not 100% certain. But is that, was that the Turpin type? Is that what, who introduced that? Is that what kind of... Yeah, kind, kind of, you know, I, I, I can't say what exactly each style is, but a lot of people consider... The standard way of running a trumpet, the turpin style, and then the raspy style is the farmer style, which was made popular by Mr. Zach Farmer, who's, I mean, he's one of the best trumpet guys ever. Um, he kind of, and I, I don't know that he was the first to come out with that raspy style, but he's kind of what made it more well known. And um, just his style and method of drawing air and and playing that call, um, you know, I, I've sat with him for hours and, and we've, you know, played calls and everything and just to listen to him run that call, it sounds so much like a turkey. More realistic, that's what I was going Very to say. realistic. And uh, you, you don't, one thing I got to say though, um, if you call with rasp or you don't, doesn't matter as long as it's, the rhythm is the same and all, there's clear turkeys Mm -hmm. There's raspy turkeys. Mm -hmm. There's no one certain way. You can't say one way is better than the other. You, sometimes I'll call clear, and then I'll come in behind it with rasp, and then try to sound like two different birds. So, you I know, think that raspy sound is intriguing to people because, to me at least, I'd never heard it. Like yeah. I had always heard a wing bone and a trumpet were almost hand in hand. They both had that clear sound, that doo -loo, doo -loo kind mm -hmm. of, I, you know, it's probably a terrible representation of what it was actually sounding like. But mm -hmm. when I started hearing that rasp in there, I thought, man, that is different. And we sat down in South Carolina that day and, mm -hmm. and Mr. Farmer was there and he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, he didn't even have a call that day. Mm -hmm. Best I remember, he just had a piece yeah. of a wing bone. Yeah. and was mimicking that and you could hear it and then you get you were calling on your trumpet some and that next morning we went in there and had those hens get close to to uh to me and i heard one of those hens. we got a hen super super aggravated with us mm -hmm. and if i can find that audio i'll include it right here She was walking off she started doing some low, very very low volume yelping and 
it made the hair on my arm stand up because like I just heard yep. that last yep. night yep. around that dog on campfire. Yep. But anyways, absolutely. I mean, one way is not better than another way. It's just a way. And the more ways you have to present something to a turkey, the better off you are. More tools you have in your chest. So, yep. um, anyways, can I guess we can tell you up. what I found out. Dave, on talking about that is a good point to make to people. I before I guess before. I started hearing Mr. Farmer run it and other people, this one right here, run mm -hmm. it like a real turkey. I got a lot of reaction from turkeys, but I never closed a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. and I was, they I would, would strike get them, turkeys. They would strike turkeys, and that's kind of what I used it for, because it would strike turkeys and it would make hens fire up. Yeah. But the more of that lower tone, raspy stuff I started learning how to do, then you could close them. Closing them turkey. That's when I started closing because it's more realistic. I guess get back, like I guess let's start back with back it. Back where you're at. Where you're holding it. Holding it and mm -hmm. running. Um, you know, everybody's call is designed maybe to hold a little bit different. I, mine, um, and the way I always run it, is I hold it just like that, and then I bring that middle finger, the side of the middle finger kind of over halfway of the hole, kind of like that, and then... I can I can bring these and choke that down a little bit if I need to, or I can open it up depending on the tone I want. Because back pressure's got a little bit to do with the, the sound. Back that you pressure want to and, um, and and it changes the tone as well. And then this hand does the same. Mm -hmm. I can direct the sound like this, or I can I can make it deeper. Um, I can open it up and get a little higher pitch. You know, if I want to sound like two ends, I'll, volume. I'll, you know, kind of just, I may leave this hand here, but I'll, it's not really a factor. And then I'll come in and close it off and change hands. Um, I wanted to get back to where we were talking about that, that what I, what I had associated with the trumpet sound. Can you make those sounds just that clean, like a, what people would typically, what I always typically thought of when I heard it, when I thought about the sound that a trumpet makes? Yeah, I mean, a standard, more like a clear sound would be. That's what I had always envisioned when I, that's what I'd heard people, mm -hmm. that's what I had heard people, the sounds I'd heard out of trumpets, and it was more hand in hand with a, like a wing bone sound to me. A clean sound, um, but anyways, hit what hit the hit the farmer style or that raspy style that's that's kind of well intrigues folks. Um, what I like to do, I'll, I'll just kind of start you off what I like to do in the morning, and then I'll I'll kind of do some clear stuff, and then I'll go into the raspy. All right, all right, yeah, morning early stuff, and then then I can get into the you know louder raspier type of stuff. But I'll start off just kind of tree up and. It's kind of a couple of hens waking up, yeah. Yeah. getting a little loud on the limb. And you can hear that that rear end in that trumpet. Mm -hmm. that, I, I, that When I started hearing that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I was like, that's what got my wheels spinning. And you have, just like with Mark, me and him discussed this earlier, um, you have different, my, my hen that I like to hear mm -hmm. is, is different than his hen. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually have to, I mean, in other words, I like a little, any call that I'm running, I like a little more front end rollover. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so that's the way I try to run a trumpet. Mm -hmm. Mark, to me, and people's mentioned this before, every call he runs, whether it's a box, a mouth call, he's getting that sound. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, his, that, that that's hen, his yeah. hen. Yeah. So yeah. it's a hen, but you're going to, so, you know, try not to sound like, just try to get that hen in your yeah. mind, you know, so mine's a little different than Mark's as far as.
I got a little more roll in front yeah. of me. I don't, I don't think higher. anybody else. I don't think anybody can deny that either one of those are here turkeys. You know? you know, so it's, it's just a different. Carries just like when he runs his mouth call. He's got more of a hit to mm -hmm. him. Yeah, I like that's, and that's that's my and that's you know that's hand. my hit. That's what he's got. Yeah. I think yeah. me and you discussed it with yep. a mouth call. Yep. Yours has got a little later roll than yep. I like. It's exactly. a hen. I've heard her. Yep. <laughs> but that's not my hen. You yep. Know? Yep. So, uh, it's, people it's all turkey. That. Yeah, it's, it's all, all turkey. turkey. And your rhythm, you know, that up and down and putting that feeling in it yeah. is, is a major part. But, you know, neither one of us is really, and like Mark said, we're drawing from, drawing from here easy yep. and just letting it, it get your vibration off your lips and amplify mine's, it. So. Mine's more of a, more of maybe a sliding yelp, yep. kind of a box right. call. More type sound. Mm -hmm. I guess let's get into more of the little bit more of the the mechanics of running it. We've we've seen both of you guys run them and, and put the how you grip them. Would you say your grip pretty much matches pretty much, up? Pretty much. Yeah, I try to cover up. To me, that's that back pressure. You yeah, know. You, they're getting back you know, pressure by I putting the finger the over the end of that the bell of that trumpet. Not covering it, but you know, mm -hmm. ha halfway. You know, like you you, know, you tell a difference in. Absolutely. More of a throatier sound, I think. As far as the rasp, I mean, everybody's going to get rasped different. Yep. I have to, if I run straight on, I have not as much rasp. If I turn to where that I get more vibration, question. more vibration, and and I think a little bit of wetness on your lips helps yep. with your rasp. So you're just going to have to, like Mark said, put it in there and try different, different ways. I mean, I've cut half of my lip to get more vibration. Yeah. But your rasp is in, you know, everybody's going to run it I've heard that some people have to run it out the side because it tickles the middle. And some, like when I run a trumpet, it's straight out of the center. Mm -hmm. That's the way I, that's what's comfortable for me. That's what I can't do hardly anything off each side of my mouth. It's yeah. got to be right out of the center every time. I used to run on the side. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing about running it on the side, some people do it fine. But you, you can't tighten your lips on the side as right. good. You, you have less control. Mm -hmm of your lips on the side as you do in the front. Mm -hmm. In the front, I can loosen them, I can tighten them. Like I have, you know. I just have more control like that. Right. And over to the side just seemed like it was more difficult mm -hmm. for me. Well, let's talk about mouth placement, I guess, or putting that mouthpiece to your lips. Recommendations, where to start. Um, I run mine in the center, and like you said, it, it, it will tickle your lip, but you kind of get over that. <clears throat> Same as a diaphragm call. You, after a while, you just get used to it. Mm -hmm. I think your I think your lip stop depth, depth is the most stop. critical. Yeah. Um, I used to run the the older trumpets that I run my my first trumpets. You remember I I didn't run hardly any because I was getting a vibration out here. But if you got this too far down, it's gonna get past. Your lip vibrate. If you got it too far out, so really getting that lip, and everybody's gonna be different on that. But I think but the that's lip where the is that's where the quick. rasp is coming from is is your lips. Yep. This is where the rasp right. is originating is your lips. You're getting that rasp and, and it traveling through that trumpet body is what's giving it is amplifying that sound and actually coming out the way it and you know received. I guess. Get it. Do it like a little bit of rasp and then you know get real, yeah, real right. raspy because I wasn't running anything raspy a while ago. Yeah. Just like, um, you know, I put mine in until I get it where I want it. And then you can start off with a couple of clucks, get set. Various different ranges of rasp. You can get more, less, or clear. Right. You notice he was 
you know, kind of turn. You got to get it. Got to get it in there like you want. And, and that's and that you're adjusting that call to allow for your lip to create more or less rasp. So you're putting that that into that mouthpiece. Basically, you're positioning it. But I'd say let's just talk from dead a center of your lip. You're pushing it into the center of your lip. You may be pushing it a little bit more back, maybe a little bit more forward, and that's what people are going to have to find the position on their lip and that consistent draw to the, give them the, the rasp that they want, and then they can manipulate that rasp by adjusting. Well, the draw is more important than the, than the lips um, because of the way the air is coming across. The draw has to be the same because if, you, if you're kissing any at all or if you're using the other method any, it makes it a lot harder. So the, the draw is the secret. It's not so much lip or anything like that. It's, and it's not really a secret, it's just a matter of playing the call until you get proficient with it. You know, um, that's that's the only thing I can tell you is there's no shortcuts. Yeah. You have to determine that you're going to learn to play it and stick with it until you get it. You'll get it if you play it long enough and, and if you want to get it. The biggest thing I hear is, man, I was trying too hard. That's, that's the biggest, <laughs> yeah. you know, trying, yeah. you know, yeah. just yeah. trying. Yeah. And then when they start backing off and like Mark said, that draw, that consistent using the throw, draw, using yep. closing down the finger. Learn to, to play bit. it as soft as That's you right. can, and then you can take that method and and build volume. But you can't take that volume and then and you, so you got to you got to learn to play it as soft as you possibly can, and then you can build. It's on a lot volume. easier to climb up the ladder than it is to come exactly. down the ladder. Yeah, you, you're not you're you're getting away from the 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 right method when you start getting too loud too quick and in my opinion this, that method the one that kind of strikes me is that raspy sound um the reason that it is so attractive to me is the sounds that you're getting on that low range that that mm -hmm. that soft stuff that i didn't even know was possible with the trumpet that i'm mm -hmm. that you can hear in that stuff that is pure turkey and that adding that rasp in there gives it that throaty chesty sound mm -hmm. that you hear in a turkey that's real turkey i mean i think to my ear the trumpet if you play it correctly is as real as it gets on I the mean, low range stuff for on the low or, range stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no i don't think there's anything now you know obviously some diaphragm guys that are just absolutely you know grand national guys can can run a diaphragm and you know it's really good you know stuff you know? i know one or two <laughs> Y'all notice when he's playing a trumpet, I grin like a possum because for some reason I don't do that with anybody doing it. It's only a trumpet sound that makes me grin, and I can't <laughs> stop it. It's a grin that I can't. It's the sounds that come out of a trumpet that I'm like. I guess it's because everything else when I hear it, I go, I, say, I think about it. Like my wheels start turning. Like oh, okay, I can figure that out. But that trumpet is still mesmerizing to me when I hear a lot of the sounds. I'm like I can't figure it out. Like I don't know what it's coming from. You know. So we've kind of we've kind of touched on. A little bit of everything. I mean, how you guys were introduced to trumpets, how I was introduced to trumpets, uh, kind of a little bit of a history lesson. We're not historians here, but yeah. from just our knowledge of what where a trumpet come from and some of the uh, the gentlemen that brought it to us. And uh, then we obviously talked about how to hold the trumpet and how to make sounds on the trumpet and some of the things that I think gets people kind of up and off the ground if they want to grab a hold of a trumpet and try it, at least to get somebody, you know, upright mm -hmm. with it. Um, we've just mostly just done the clucking and the yelping so far. Well, just like anything, any call, um, you know, I want to try to sound like more than one turkey. And I want to try to sound like if I need to throw a jake in there, I'll throw that in there. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of learn over time w what makes the different sounds and how you can change how you hold it and how you draw your air to make the different sounds. It's like um, a what I do a lot of times is, is I'll do a kind of a clearer, softer hen and then I'll cut her off with a, a loud raspy hen and then like uh, maybe throw a jake in there if I need to like if you know if I'm trying to get that jealousy factor in there if it's a gobbler or whatever so I'll kind of run something like that
I didn't hear but three ever turkey. Well, that was three. That was, four. That was three. <laughs> but you know, the the thing is, is is um, it it, it just adds realism, yeah. you know. It's a party two is better on. than one. Yeah. When it comes to them thinking about ladies on the street, exactly. but two is better than one. Three is better than two. You yeah. know, if you can paint a picture to where you're, you know, you're you're putting a whole. It's just what they're going to hear on a day to day basis. You know. That's right. Well, you you kind of touched good on the close in soft stuff. One of one of my deals when I'm hunting, toting a trumpet, is I've got the confidence. Just say you're trolling mid morning, and I got a certain little thing that I do, and if a hen don't answer or a gobbler don't answer, I'm walking on. It's in my mind. You're confident. They're that not. It and, is. And, it, and it's yeah. not the soft. It, I mean, it's. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there, long boxes and stuff that'll make one gobble, but I've got confidence in that that if there's a turkey there that's gonna it's gonna work, gonna work, that's gonna find them. Mm. And and you know that's it's it's not the close in stuff, but it's something that I do. But it gets back to the. Mm -hmm. The, the older type sound, yeah. but that that will snatch a gobble or make yeah, because a because it's got up. that dog on. And I think that's what happened that morning like when we was on. That's kind of what I done that morning, just to we knew yeah. they was there. Yep. And then once you find out they're there, then you gonna go to your softer stuff. Yep. But you can you, you know, finish them. That's, well, that's when it's a very conf, you know it's a confidence uh, call. Uh, yeah. Um, and and you you got confidence because I've I've seen you strike turkeys with it mm -hmm. when nothing else would, right. and you you know. That loud stuff, from a distance, it, it sounds like a turkey mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I have had Kerry walk off, and he hit that thing hard like that, and it sounds like a turkey at a mm -hmm. distance. It's got that. that there again, it's that hard. pleading or excited built-in sound yeah. that yeah. you you have to make another type call yeah. to yeah. where that kind of does it. So it's, that's kind of my. You know, a lot of guys that's hunting with me, I, I'm like, all right, boys, we need to go somewhere else. <laughs> they, they ain't here. They ain't working. They ain't working. here, and they ain't going to do right. it today it's if they are much here. much confidence but... in one through the years, you know. Yeah. Well, we've about, uh, I'm hoping that we've hit on a little bit of everything, and I'm hoping folks that watch this thing and have survived to the end have picked up a few things on trumpets. Even folks that have run them before and just wanted to kind of check out this sound that they're hearing and maybe some advice on how to get it and how to hold a trumpet but i've had a lot of folks that are just like hey i want to get a trumpet i'm like if you ever you're on a trumpet nope but i like the sound i want to try it and i'm like well man i just hate them just getting something that they've put into the mail because it's an investment most trumpets are not it's not like going to buy a three dollar mouth helper at walmart i mean it's a uh, people are proud of their craft and they don't you know they dang well should be because the amount of time that it takes to turn these trumpets and the amount of uh, labor that goes into developing the internals and getting the sounds that you want mm -hmm. um and um so when people get them i think it'd be awesome for them to have a little bit of direction on how to get the sounds and i'm hoping this thing has accomplished that what do y'all think i think so yeah. you know there's a lot of trumpets that are art i mean there's some for sure there's some beautiful craftsmen that that make some beautiful things so you need that's another thing you need to decide whether you want to collect trumpets or you want to put it on a shelf or you want to hunt with it um you know some of the some of the hunting style i call it the field grade mm -hmm. is you know it's all turkey but it may not be you know as as beautiful and flashy ornate as some of yeah. the really nice stuff you know that some of these guys can make um n n none's better than the other i mean there's a lot of good trumpet builders out there and and they a lot of different styles i think it's important to it go somewhere where there's a lot like unicoi or somewhere where there's a lot of guys selling trumpets and and run them and see which fits your style better i agree um you know i make calls to that fit my style i mean that's the only way i can tune them is to mm -hmm. you know you got to be be aware of a guy who can't sound like a turkey on his own call yeah because for sure <laughs> he's, he's not going to be able to you know there's probably, how are you gonna you're probably not going to be able to do it yeah. either yeah yeah so you know Talk to the guys making them, look at them, decide what, what exactly you're looking for and the sound you're looking for, and go from there. That's my recommendation. Yeah, but it's a it's valuable, a, valuable tool to have. That's what I say. It's a heck head. of a tool to have to have with you, no for sure. Game so. changer. Game changer.
But anyways, I want to thank these two gentlemen for sitting down with me for a second. I'm fixing to have to review all this footage to make sure I didn't screw it up somehow because I have a real good, real good, um, my track record's not so good with this type of stuff. So um, I'm going to look at all that, but I think we've just shot a video from beginning to end on trumpets and the type of trumpets that we use and how to use them kind of at least a uh there's not a whole lot that you can say in more detail than that i mean i think it's not I mean like like mouth helpers you can get into tongue position on the latex you can get into you know they're blowing out of this side of your mouth blowing out of that side of your mouth dropping your jaw clenching your teeth but when it comes to trumpets it is 100 percent based on that draw being consistent with it mm -hmm. and the amount that you're drawing and manipulating that is then it's just to place it on your lip I mean your hands are they are important without them you wouldn't be able to function the trumpet but it literally it's those three pieces and their unity that yeah. causes that sound and just continuing to practice you have to put the time in there's no there's no way that anybody can tell you exactly what to do to sound like this or do that you have to put the time in, and it's it's one hundred percent just practice, practice, and there's there's nothing else that that's going to get you there but that. Well, if you liked this trumpet little ex instructional or trumpet talk or whatever we want to call this thing, trumpet time, trumpet yeah. time, trumpet time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got us to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your buddies. Um, I hope it was informative to some of you guys hopefully you're going to go out and get a trumpet and you're going to know what to do with it from here on out but uh until next time